and the first input now corresponds to the ASCII controller for PS1. These controllers, the rest of the controllers do not have analog or dual shock on them. I don't know if there was any third party controller made that had the dual shock capability. Um, see, it's very responsive. This pad's actually very responsive, even though it's very, very easily depressed and doesn't give much feedback when it's pushed. Um, I do remember this controller being very good. <clears throat> Again, I'll push start and select. These main four buttons here. You see they all produce lights, the R buttons, and the L buttons. Next up is the original non dual shock controller by Sony. Again, I'll close this window. And since it's plugged in the controller, a uh, player two port, I go to the second from the top um, option on the game controllers submenu from the control panel. So again, up, down, left, right, all work. As I make a circular motion, it responds accordingly here. Push select and start. These four main buttons all map to one, two, three, and four. You see they also, I can push them all at the same time. The R buttons here and the L buttons. And the last controller I have to show you is that odd Namco controller. And I'm guessing it's from some kind of racing game with the really nice handles. And really, I mean, beautiful shaped controller um, for people that like to hold, for people that like to use their thumbs completely on the controller. I personally like to actually hold my controller different usually but it depends on the game I hold the control I sometimes play um, with my right hand with the thumbs or I'll use actually my um, index middle and uh, ring finger um, I like doing that on the Sega Saturn pad and another control for Super actually I even play Super Nintendo like that although I don't use the ring finger for that um, but I can show you that kind of way to play uh, controller maybe when I go to the Sega Saturn controller. Anyway, I, th I think last time I checked, this does not work with the um, with the USB adapter that I have, but um, the other buttons work fine. So let me test that. I'll put that in port one. And here we're going to see this controller and see what it does on the screen. Again, I'll go to the first controller listed since that corresponds to the one connected to the player one port on the USB adapt the PlayStation to PC USB adapter. Up, down, left, right. Move it around in a circle. Start or select I mean start let me raise this controller up see the uh, R2 buttons working the L2 buttons working and now I'm gonna move this thing around you see nothing happens at all when I spin this circular uh, spinner really like an Arkanoid controller almost so I'll, I'm gonna push this button here mode I think that enables it see I guess this turns it on but I don't think it does anything you can probably hear that I'm moving the thing and there's no change on the joystick properties menu here in control panel which I believe means that this does nothing. Windows is not reading any changes that this controller is producing with this wheel right now, or spinner. And let's see if the other buttons work on the spinner mode. The other buttons all seem to work still. So I'm thinking that this special mode button really does not affect. Let's see if the up, down, left work work. Yes, those work too. 
I think this mode button really does nothing to affect the way the PlayStation to USB adapter works at all. It's uh, totally insensitive to whether this is turned on or off. It's my guess when playing a game. So, like I said, I have that plugged into port 1. It even says Namco on the plug. This one's like this one says Sony, this one says Namco. So, I'm going to actually go to an emulator now and show you the PlayStation controller in action. And I don't have, sadly, any PlayStation 1 emulators set up because I haven't been playing PlayStation 1. Uh, and I'm making this video in rather haste. But I will show you another emulator. So, let's go to a, um, a Super Nintendo emulator. ZSNES. And I'll show you how easy it is to map. So here we go to config, input one, and key joist, keyboard slash joystick, and I'll click set keys. Actually, I don't need to click set keys, I can just click this. Click on up, says press the key or button to use. So again, I push up here. Asks for down. And I push down on the controller. I'm not going to be doing this for every single or showing you this for every controller that I do this with but I'll show you um, a few of them. Actually this isn't really changing much so it's kind of boring. Let me actually set it to this. I'll just click set. It's going to, it's going to map these actually to keyboard buttons. So now I'll change it and you'll see an actual difference in what it says there. Uh, as I push up, you'll see it says the J03. That's because it's reading this controller. Before it was, we noticed no change. And I think that's because the other controller that I usually use, it was reading those same settings as that. And this is not the controller that I usually use when playing emulators. Or the adapter that I usually use. I usually use um, a Sega Saturn controller, which I'll show you later. But here's the select button. We can map it right to select on the Sega Sa uh, <coughs> PlayStation controller. Because the PlayStation controller is extremely similar to the Super Nintendo controller. And in fact, the early PlayStation controller is pretty much the same thing as the Super Nintendo controller with the added additional R2 and L2 bumpers. Now, this gets tricky because it's asking for A, and you have to recall how the Super Nintendo controller is mapped. If you want to keep that order, now you could map buttons anywhere you want on a controller, but if you want it to feel like a Super Nintendo, you may as well map it similar to a Super Nintendo. So, we want to map the button A. On a Super Nintendo controller, this is B, and this is A. So, B, of course, corresponds to the X con button on the PlayStation controller. And if you don't know or you've never owned a Super Nintendo controller, having a picture of one, a photo of one, which you can get online, will help a great deal. So we can see here, there's X and Y. And actually, instead of showing a photo, or talking about a photo, I will get a Super Nintendo controller out. And here is a, an original Super Nintendo controller is made by Nintendo, the first party controller. And you can see here the way and the similar the great similarity between them. So when the emulator asks you, asks the user to enter button X, it's asking it's the emulator is assuming a controller like this, or an input like this, I should say. It doesn't assume a control. You can input buttons any way you want. And But if you want to have a similar Super Nintendo feel on your PlayStation controller, you'll want to um, map them similarly. So again, you have Y, X, B, A. So that's the way I've been mapping them, is in a corresponding fashion to that controller. So again, I'll go to, um, I don't even know what button, I think I'm programming X right now. Enter the button, so again, X is here, on, corresponds to that, and Y 
of course, corresponds to the uh, the square. And in L and R, I can make either as the L1 or L2 bumpers. I'll just use the L1 bumper. So I'm going to use L1 for L. Super Nintendo doesn't have L1 and L. It doesn't distinguish between L1 and L2 because it only has one of them, one of each. And I'll and I'll set R2, R, R to the R1 bumper on the PlayStation controller. And that's my setting. So now, I'll run a game. Let me get this camera to focus here. And I will pick. I don't have, I don't have much of a selection. I don't have, all I don't have a whole ROM set uh, loaded at the moment, but um, I'll load uh, Turtles in Time. Zoom out. Push start. See, it responds completely here. Go to the option menu. Hmm. 